Hello everybody, it's Siobhan again from At One Wellbeing. So the next topic that we're going to cover in this series of videos is around problem solving. And have you ever encountered a problem or a challenge or an issue that you're facing and you become totally overwhelmed because you can't actually see a way out of it? And when you think about problem solving and the ability to positively solve problems, really that is about resilience as well. And if you can start to find ways to routinely solve problems, that builds your resilience to poor mental health and it helps you to identify and overcome challenges much more quickly. So you do know the form, we're going to share a presentation and it always takes me a wee second or two to get this ready. Um, so I think it's an interesting topic because until I discovered ways to solve problems and issues that were happening in my life, you know, I could have mulled over it for absolutely ages thinking about what will I do, what am I going to do, why is this a problem right now, why is this a challenge right now. So I just thought it was an interesting topic for us to discuss today. And again, if you have any questions, queries, my contact details are on the last slide, just send it through to me. I also have a copy of the exercise that we're going to go through today. But you know what, even if you learn one thing today, or even if you identify one thing today that you can do to help yourself, sure is not what this is all about. And at this particular time, uh, as we're coming out of lockdown and there's so much going on and, you know, so many difficulties facing us in life, problems can become overwhelming. So this is just one technique that you can use on yourself or with others to actually help you to start to more effectively and more efficiently solve problems. So we all know, we all know that it can be really easy to sink into negativity when we're thinking about the challenges we face. You can wake up in the morning, you can feel like, oh no, 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 it's still here, it's still here, and what am I going to do? But this process helps you to uncover solutions, and it's a really positive way to think about solving problems. And you know what, it might, I'll go through this in the entire slides, but you know, when you start to ask yourself questions about the problem and about the challenge that you're facing, it begins a process that enables you then to actually manage it yourself and to help yourself to overcome problems. So the process that we're going to use today is around a four set step plan, which is discover, dream, design, and deliver, also called appreciative inquiry. But we're not going to do too much detail on that. So this process I find very, very useful. It's also a tool that we use in coaching and it can help people from feeling overwhelmed by the challenges that they face to actually being much more solution focused. And you know what? If you think about being solution focused, isn't that really positive and proactive? And that's you taking back control. That's you recognizing your inner strength. That's you talking to yourself more positively. So discover. So when you think about the strengths that you have, what strengths do you already have that you can apply to this situation? What core strengths do you possess that have helped you in the past? Because one way of looking at the problems that you're facing now is sometimes when you've had a problem before and you recognize that, yes, I overcame that problem, what strengths did you bring to the table to help you to overcome that problem? So dream, imagine, imagine the future, imagine this wonderful future and think about what success might look like in the future and think about how you might feel if this problem was solved, if this challenge was overcome, if this issue was resolved. What does success look like? How would you feel when it's done? And then, what will it take to get you there? So it's about identifying the steps, both big and small. And I always, always start with the tiniest, tiniest step. Because you know what? Say when you are facing challenges and you're thinking about these massive steps, that in itself can become the challenge. And it can actually stop you from really recognizing, do you know what? There's something tiny that I can do here something tiny that can move me from where I'm at to where I want to be. So that's when you start to design. You, de you design, you take control, and you do it for yourself. And then deliver, right? So what actions, tiny, tiny actions, would get you started on your path? And I always say, you know, when I think about things that have happened in my life, sometimes it's not the giant leaps. Sometimes it's the tiniest, tiniest wee step that you can take to help yourself and recognizing it and patting yourself in the back and understanding that every step is a marginal gain. It's a marginal gain. It might be the tiniest wee step, but when you put them all together, what is it? It's one big step. 
So that's the process that we're going to use today. So what I'm going to do then is start to ask you some questions. Well, of course I can't ask you questions. I'm sitting here in front of a computer screen. You're sitting somewhere else in front of a computer screen watching this. But if you think about this as a process and about this as a methodology and technique that you can use to assist you on your journey from A to B, wherever A is, wherever B is, it is about problem solving. It's about identifying and overcoming challenges that you're facing right here, right now. And you know, I think there's something really positive about that because until you know that you can ask yourself some questions, you can become really, really, really stuck. And in that stuckness or that's where you're stuck at, you can feel all sorts of negative emotions. You can feel all, you know, sense of negativity around yourself and why can't I do this and why can't I move forward? And why can't I get through this? And that is quite natural. And don't ever, ever beat yourself up for being stuck. What I'm trying to do today is just to give you a wee, maybe a wee push in the right direction. So how does that feel for everybody? Oh, I can tell you're all sitting there super excited. <laughs> you can't wait until I move on to the next slide. So do you know what? Problem solving always starts with the question, what is your biggest problem or your biggest challenge or your biggest issue at the moment? So what is it, right? And so when you can identify what the real problem is, so for example, if you're having problems with your family or if you're having issues with your self-confidence or if you're having issues at work or you're fearful for the future, what is the biggest problem here and now? And you know what? When you think of problems, we don't want to get too stuck in the problem because as we begin to focus more deeply on our problems, well, then we can become totally immersed in that problem. And we can think of it sometimes as an unmovable object. And in actual fact, generally problems can be shifted and you can see your way through it and you can work your way through it. And when you look at the next question and you ask yourself, well, in regards to this and in regards to my life, what is going well right now? Because inevitably there will be certain things in your life going well. So if you're having issues at work or you know, you're sitting in front of a computer screen all day, and you're task driven, is there anything going well right now? So when you turn that computer off, what is it that you do that is pleasurable? What is it that you do that brings you joy? What is it that you do that makes you laugh? You know, having a laugh is so important. And you know, when you think about the problem or the challenge that you're facing, are you making judgments about yourself? Are you judging yourself harshly? We did talk about the inner critic. You know, that voice that tells you you're not good enough, you can't do, why are you even trying? Sure, you're rubbish at this. Are you making judgments about yourself right now? And if you are, what are those judgments? What are you saying to yourself in regards to the problem or issue or challenge that you're facing? And importantly, ask yourself, have I handled this type of situation successfully before? And you know what? Bring in all of that skillfulness that you had and all of that resilience and resources that you have because we are as human beings incredibly resourceful you know that internal strength that we have that sometimes we are so browbeat that we can't even recognize it but when you look at issues and situations that you've faced before what type of situations have you you know successfully overcome before because knowing that you have done it in the past can give you an element of confidence about doing it again so i always think right okay i've had i've had some real difficulties in my life um, real challenging situations in my life, which I will not go into. But when I look back and I think, well, do you know what, Siobhan, didn't you do a brilliant job? Didn't you get yourself out of that, you know, that situation, that, that difficulty that you were in? And when you think about how you did it in the past successfully, well, that can even generate some, some enthusiasm or some energy around doing it again. And listen, I, I know that when you're facing challenges and difficulties in life, that ha having the energy to solve problems, having the energy to overcome issues can be one of the biggest difficulties that you can face because sometimes when the challenge is so big, you get tired. You just get tired and you get fed up and you lose the energy and the willingness to actually start a journey to overcome the problem, issue or difficulty. I know that myself. I have been there. But the, that inner resourcefulness and that inner resilience that I have makes me think, well, do you know what, Siobhan, 
either you accept that the problem is not going away or you do something about it. And sometimes when I think about problems that I have, I, I'm not prepared to accept them. So the only other thing that I actually can do is do something. And I'm sure if you have listened to the videos that I have done for uh, Anita and the Nishi project before, you'll know that when, when I think about you know, making changes, I always say do nothing equals nothing. You change nothing, nothing changes. So really it is about you to look deep within yourself and recognize the brilliance that you have within yourself and bring that forth when you think about the challenge or problem that you have at the minute. All right, going good so far? Are you with me? Great, we'll move on to the next series of questions. So are you being critical of yourself right now? So if you're having a problem, are you blaming yourself? Are you, if you have a challenge that you're finding difficult to overcome, are you being really critical of yourself? And again, that's that, that critical voice that can stop us from taking the next step. That, that belief that we have that we can't do it. That thing that says, don't even try, you know, this is, this is so big that you can do nothing. Are you being overly critical of yourself right now? And then, what possibilities exist that you actually haven't thought of yet? And I always find when I'm doing this exercise, that this is one of the actually most difficult questions because when you're in that mindset of, you know, having challenges and problems, you're actually not thinking of possibilities. You're so overwhelmed and so overcome by the feelings and emotions that you have around the problems and the thinking style that you apply to the problem and how you're thinking about it. You know, are there possibilities that exist that you haven't even thought of? And you know, I would invite you to take a couple of minutes just to consider that question because when you're fully focused on the problem, you are not seeing anything else out there. You are not thinking of any other possibilities. You're not thinking that there may be somebody else that you can talk to that can help you through this problem. You may not be looking at things that you have done in the past where you have problem solved before or overcome challenges before. So are there any possibilities at the minute that you have not yet thought of? Right, that's an interesting one. So spend a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes really thinking about that. Because, and even, do you know what? Write it down. Because I always find that when I write things down, it gets it out of my head and onto a piece of paper. And then when I can see it, either it gives me strength or it removes the, the powerfulness of negative emotions over me. And that's why a lot of people use journaling, actually, to manage their, manage their challenges and issues. So what possibilities exist that you haven't thought of? Also, if this challenge was overcome already, how did you overcome it? Right, another very, very good question. And what that does, that enables you to get yourself out of that stuck mindset and think, right, okay, if I was on the other side of this and I was looking back, how would I have overcome it? What natural strength would I apply to this situation to help me to overcome the challenge or problem? I have learned to keep a glass of water beside me because when I talk a lot, and then I get a wee tickly thing in the back of my throat. So I'm not letting it get the better of me today. So that's my challenge and how did I overcome it? Glass of water. So there are other things, you know what, when we are facing problems ourselves and sometimes our problems are so distressing that we actually don't even want to talk to anybody about them. But are there things that you haven't admitted out loud yet? So are there things that you're thinking to yourself that you haven't admitted out loud yet? You know, because when we're facing problems and challenges, Generally, our emotions are a wee bit more negative. How we talk to ourselves is certainly more negative. And is there anything that you haven't admitted to yourself out loud yet? Because you know what, when I think about um, challenges that I faced, even in my, in my own life, were there things that I didn't admit out loud? And if there were, how did I feel when I said it out loud for the first time? And there can be something around that, like lifting or unshackling of your feelings when you actually admit out loud what it is that the core of this issue is. And I don't mean you have to go and tell friends, family, relatives, anybody, actually just admitting it to yourself. So is there something that's holding you back? Some even belief that you have about yourself that you haven't admitted out loud? You know, these beliefs that we talked about earlier, these things that are formed in childhood, the things that we believe about ourselves that can actually have an impact on our adult life, is there something that you haven't admitted out loud yet? And again, I would invite you, even if you're going through this, I have the exercise, which I will email to anybody who wants it, 
and that exercise is for completing. So I can't get you to complete it today if we were face to face. I would have the exercise with me and you would be sitting and you would be thinking to yourself. And you know what, sometimes when you're in even a room full of people and you're thinking about challenges that you have, uh, there's something about the energy of the room that can actually help to lift you up as well. And there's something about the energy of other people and the good energy of other people. I don't mean the dark clouds in your life. I mean the people who bring positivity and energy to your life that can help you to problem solve, that can help you to rationalize the issues that you're facing or the challenges that you have. So there's something in that admitting out loud, but first of all, admit it to yourself. So, oh my goodness, if there was an easy way forward out of this, what would it be? And sometimes, you know what, I think to myself, oh my God, I'll do nothing. I'll do nothing, I'll, I'll, I'll just sit here and, you know, you know, feel that this challenge cannot be overcome. Is there an easy way forward? The easy way is never to do nothing. There may be something simple that you can do. That first step, that first step, what is the easy way forward for you? Write down what your desired outcome is. So if, you, if you're having a problem with being burnt out, or if you're having a problem that you're not building in enough self-care into your life, if you have a problem that you're not getting enough exercise or eating a poor diet, write down your desired outcome. What is it that you would like to see at the end of this? What outcome or what change would you like to see? And imagine, and this is all about the dreaming, this is about imagining how it would feel if you got there. How would it feel if you already had achieved that outcome? And with that, you know, that feeling of achievement comes a sense of purpose. And sometimes when our challenges are, are big and when you feel that you can't overcome them, we kind of lose our sense of purpose. We even can't think about a desired outcome. We can't even think about how it feels to get there. So by you articulating these to yourself, how does it feel when you get there? I would imagine if the, your challenge was overcome, if the problem was solved, if the issue was resolved, I think you would probably be feeling quite positive about it. So even you know, imagining that for yourself as a motivating factor to get you started. And the next question is, how does it feel if you don't get there? And that's a really important question on the flip side. Because if you don't reach your desired outcome, how does it feel? And again, there's a push and pull here in terms of motivation. How does it feel if, when, when you get there? That really pulls you forward. It pulls you forward. That motivates you to do something. Also, how does it feel if you don't as a push factor? Because I know from personal experience when I am facing massive challenges in my life, the last place I want to be is exactly where I'm at. I want to reach that desired outcome. And there's something in knowing how I feel if I don't get there that actually pushes me to action. So that push and pull around motivation, also use it to your advantage. Ask yourself these questions. You know, how does it feel if I get there and how does it feel if I don't? If it's beautifully wonderful when I get there and if it's unbearable if I don't, well, do you know what? That actually can start you to really think through how you're going to make this change or how you're going to overcome the challenge. So, right, we have gone through the series of questions. We have talked about all of the things that we can ask ourselves and all of the answers are the really, really, really most important thing. And for you as an individual sitting here today, and if you're watching this, and if you have challenges, and if you're going through this process of questioning, and if you're writing down the answers, don't feel overwhelmed by the answers that you give. Feel it as a positive step forward, a tiny step forward. You know what, even by completing the series of questions, there's something cathartic about that. There's something that can open your eyes to possibilities around problem solving, around overcoming challenges and issues. So go through the series of questions. You know, deliver, now deliver. You have designed, you have dreamed, you have discovered, and now it's about time to think about, right, okay, I have asked myself these questions, what is it that I want to do? What is your very, very, very first small step to make this challenge easier? And you know what, depending on the size of the challenge, it may take a number of steps. But even identifying that very first step, and it's just about making it easier, it's not that overwhelming feeling of I have to do something right now to change everything. No, you don't. 
small steps, one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, always one foot in front of the other. That feeling that you get when you take this first small step. And don't ever forget to congratulate yourself. Don't ever forget to say, do you know what? The only time I'm going to look back over my shoulder is to congratulate myself on how far I have come. And what is that one very first step that you're going to commit to that you can take for yourself to make this easier? And write it down, write it down, or make sure that you develop some form of conversation with yourself that is a positive engagement with yourself. The inner critic can be silenced. We have done an exercise on silencing the inner critic. That negative automatic thinking, we have talked about it in the past and how to make changes. And it always starts with the very first step. So my question to you today is, what is the first step that you're going to take to make this challenge easier? Okay, so that's us done. I hope you found something useful in that. Some of the questions you might go, no, can't answer, won't answer, doesn't work for me. But this is a process. And if you can follow the process and even get used to building this type of questioning, this self-questioning and positive questioning into your daily life around things that are happening around you, around things that you have control over, the things we don't have control over are much more difficult for us to solve problems around. But again, we can always change our thinking about it. We can always change what we believe about it. But this exercise today was about how you can then start to build problem solving techniques into your daily life to build your resilience, your personal res resilience to mental ill health, to, you know, dinges in your well-being. This is about you. You are, are important. You know, take the time to do these things. Take the time to watch the videos. Take the time really to reflect on what is it I can do for myself and be proactive in your own life. So listen, have a great day. And as I say, if you want to get in contact with me, there is my contact details, or indeed you can get in contact with Anita at Nishi Cookstown Western Shores Area Network. So that's me done. Um, that's problem solving covered. It is only one technique. Again, you might find it useful. Some people do, some people don't. Uh, but just apply it once to one problem and see what happens. So have a great day, everybody. And I hope that you are enjoying your yourselves and that you are finding ways through all of the difficulties that we're facing right now. So I will be back again next week to do another video. Um, and if you have any feedback or any suggestions or anything that you would like to see covered, um, give us a wee buzz or a wee shout by the email address because I'm flexible in what I can do. And uh, Anita, I know, is just interested in providing something to help you maintain good well-being through this difficult period. All right, that's me. Bye.